America. And uh, we have a special guest joining us uh, today on the phone. Uh, he's a doctor of clinical psychology, a certified school psychologist. Uh, he's also an author. Books include Psychoacademic Holocaust, uh, The Special Education and ADHD Wars Against Black Boys. Dr. Umar Johnson, good morning. Good morning, Queen. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, and I, you know, I know that often you talk about education, the education of our black uh, bo children, boys in particular. As a mom, that's super important to me. We'll get to that. I know that you've also been speaking out about uh, the sort of democratic process and, and our role in it as African-Americans. Um, and I read, and I know you can't believe everything you read, so I'm asking, that you uh, said that you know African Americans should consider voting Republican. Uh, no, ma'am, not true at all. I've only stated that African Americans should consider withdrawing their support from both the Democratic and the Republican parties and folding our votes into a black political union where we meet with the leading candidates of each party and come to an agreement on what we can receive from them in exchange for our votes. So I believe we need to start leveraging those votes so that we can come to business deals with the parties as opposed to this unquestioned Democratic Party loyalty that we've had for more than a half century now. Which, I mean, they're, I guess their political deals is really what they are um, in, in politics. Uh, that's sort of business as usual. How would that happen? How would we, you know, what would be the instrument of that? Are you, are you talking about someone starting a new thing? Are we talking about working, you know, with the SCLC, the national, the uh, NAACP? You know, how no, does that man, function? No, man, this should be independent. It, it should be an independent political union of black voters. And I use the word union over party because we don't necessarily need a black party. I am not interested in a black president, a black governor, a black mayor. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not interested in it either. I'm interested in black power. And far too often, we have equated black power with a black politician. And that is very faulty reasoning. And the reason it's faulty is because most black elected officials in America are funded by white entities. They get their money from the Democratic Party, just like the white candidates. They get their money from white corporations, just like the white candidates. So it's amazing that black people are shocked that they don't get anything for their vote when the person they're voting for is already financially beholden to sources that come from outside of the black community. So we need a union. We don't need a party. We need a union. Let's leverage our votes so that we can get certain things done for the black community as opposed to voting for people based on personality. And that is the weakness for black people. We well, I think that's a weakness we like for Americans. People. I mean, they do the same thing. You know, they, they vote because well, they want some to have a beer with somebody, somebody which, yeah, I mean, I, and, you know, what's great is that uh, here are a couple things. Most of what you just said, I, you know, absolutely agree with. I think that most of us get our money from white corporations but which corporations you always have to follow the money that way you find out what the agenda is and you know and what, what corporations and what are the policies that the person is putting forth i love having a black mayor black governor black president a black senator um but not if they're all clones of clarence thomas i need to know what is their consciousness what are their policies what's the agenda um but, however, here we are in 2020, right in the middle of a primary election, and we don't have such a union per se. So how do we move forward in this moment, in your well, opinion? You're going to get nothing the same way you move forward in every other moment for the past 50 years. The presidential election is not going to benefit you, nor has it ever benefited black people, until we unite our votes. You're going to get nothing out of this. Like you got nothing out of Obama, like you got nothing out of Bush, like you got nothing out of... Well, I, I don't agree with matter. that about Obama, but I mean, he wasn't perfect, but well, we, yeah, we got some... something that... Yeah, well, quite a few things. That Barack, give me one thing that Barack Obama did 
specifically for black people. I'm not interested in America. See, I don't I'm need a red, black, and green people. bow on it. I need to know that it Nor disproportionately affected I. black people, Casey like Maine, the Affordable I'm, Care no, Act. No, no, Boom. No, no. Yeah, he that. passed laws just for gays. He passed laws just for women. What law did he pass just for black people? So for the for gay the women and oh, anyway, no, I, well, it, I, laws, that's why I'm LGBT saying I don't need. I don't need. Uh, I don't women. need a red, black, two and green ribbon on it. I just need it to have to be red, black, disproportionately in the Affordable Care Act. Let's start there. Affordable care does Absolutely. not on the that does not that does not rank on the list of the five major problems for Black America, which are you're wrong. Genocide, Sorry. mass incarceration, gentrification, access to wealth, and police genocide. Those are the five major problems for Black okay. people. Okay, so which one did so we so we don't have like disproportionate uh, numbers of health problems in almost every category and lack the, the top, means to five pay five for those. Did it you know that? You, well, you was for you America. It you was not for Black. I understand that. Okay, well, but we were disproportionately impacted by it. So that's that's why I, I say I well, don't need a red, black, and green he ribbon did on it. For us, well, he did I just named gays. something. What did he do for blacks? He did things for women. Are you in your feelings about? Gays? I mean, I why is that an feeling. issue? This is a political analysis. Ah, okay. And you have yet to answer my question. I just did. Yes, With I did. law Obama passed, affordable care was for America, not black people. And black people, Give me a law he clearly passed for not black part people. Because I can give you three for gays and two for women and three for immigrants. Give me one for black For people. me, it's not about, you know, tit for tat, about what he did for gay people, it which are talking points It's about what we need as a people. For but homophobes and misogynists, care. those are talking points. Well, you're not homophobic because you disagree with homosexuality. Christians don't huh? hate Muslims because they don't believe in Muhammad. Muslims don't hate Christians just because they don't believe in Jesus. You can disagree with someone and not hate them. I don't support LGBTQ, nor will I ever. But I don't hate them at all. But I have a right to disagree. I believe it's protected by my First Amendment. Well, you have a right to say what you want, but to say I don't agree with your existence is pretty much I didn't saying... Say I don't agree with your existence. I don't agree with your behavior. Homosexuality is a behavior. You act it. Being black is a reality. You be it. Hmm. Okay. So we'll just agree to disagree um, because I don't want to get stuck on one particular point. But I will add I'm that um, the leading cause of bankruptcy among all families is medical bills. So, I think you know when well, if you, you list wealth as one Most of your top five, they go bankrupt. Though, if, well, what, what about if you, you don't still have a job have, to go bankrupt with? In you the can first still place. get kicked out of you your apartment and employed. end up homeless on the streets, like what we have in LA. Homeless? Well, Are you then, aware that Black America is experiencing one of its highest homeless rates in the past fifty years? That's Dr. Johnson, I live in LA. I would have to be completely. A, comatose not to know that living in LA as you will see when you arrive but you just um, said people getting kicked out of their apartments but if we admit that homelessness is an issue for African Americans well that's why folks are homeless yeah kicked out yeah because what they, about those who have already been on the streets for well, years in, in many cases they could not afford medical care some need uh, substance <laughs> abuse treatment some need medical mental, mental health treatment issue. okay for you even with the affordable air, even with the affordable care act many african americans still suffer racism in the medical industry of course but that's a separate issue i mean you it know it's not a separate issue it is quality assurance is a whether or not i can afford product. to go and get it's my medicine easy. is a separate issue as to whether or it not the not do doctors under prescribed painkillers education okay. mass incarceration access to wealth and gentrification i understand Those are that the five major problems okay so Bernie dr Sanders dr umar johnson can i ask you a Joe question a can i can i ask dr sure. johnson can i ask you can we kind of go yeah. back and forth because i think a lot of times when we talk over each other then nobody hears either one of our points and i know you may be used to over talking women or others i don't over talk i don't over talk okay well let's but let's agree to disagree time, i felt that i had to Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I understand that, you know, people are not used to having a woman controlling the mic and such, but I, I will I give you your respect women if you give all the time. Okay. No problem with women. Well, I will give you your respect if you give me mine. How about that? Can we make that Absolutely. agreement? That way everyone Absolutely. can hear both points of view or all points of view. And they can Absolutely. even call five two O K J L H five two O fifty five fifty four. So Absolutely. um parents. Yes. And anyone else who wants to learn. It's not limited to parents. And what's the basic, uh, what would you title that? What's the basic agenda as far as what you want parents to do more of or know more of? 
uh, to know their school rights, to understand how the school to prison pipeline operates and how they can intervene on behalf of their child at every step of the process. So in those 12 hours, we're going to go over what exactly is a psychological evaluation, what are the components, what is an IEP, what are the components, what are your rights to object to getting that done. If your child is in special ed, how can you get them out? How can you force the school district to pay for a private school? If they're not properly being educated, what are your rights to vaccination? Uh, What is ADHD? Can schools force you to get your child evaluated? Every person who attends will get a training packet that they will keep with them forever. That will be their resource packet. And we're literally going to cover about 30 different topics in the course of those 12 hours. And we literally use all 12 hours. All right. So pack a lunch. Um, why are why are black children and particularly black boys, in your opinion, disproportionately placed in special ed? Okay. I'm going to give a philosophical reason followed by a technical reason. The philosophical reason is that public school is designed for the black boys to fail to make sure they cannot challenge white boys for political and economic control of American society. So that's the philosophy behind school failure. Technically speaking, the reason so many of our boys are failing and end up in special ed, end up on psychiatric medication is because their parents don't understand that they have a right to object. They don't understand that they have a right to say no. They don't understand that they have a right to a second opinion whenever they disagree with the initial evaluation from the school. You never have to accept what the school is selling you. You can object and get a second opinion that they must pay for. That is federal law. Now, you know, who is the they that has designed the schools specifically for black boys to fail? Well, every state guarantees the child a right to an education. Education is not a federal law, it's a state law. And every single state spends more money on incarceration than it spends on the education of black children. So if you look at the spending as well as the policies, as well as the statistics, black boys lead in almost every negative academic outcome in America. Suspension, expulsion, emotionally disturbed, ADHD, reading disabled, math disabled, and then on top of that, they're being forced to receive their education from an overwhelmingly white female teacher core. We can fix half of the pathology in black boy education if we give them black male teachers, but most states refuse to embark upon a task to bring more black men into the classroom. Okay, so so Dr. Johnson, I mean, as a mom, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, I've, I've observed and experienced my young black man, uh, boy, facing all kinds of obstacles in schools that I know are race-based. But I believe, I don't know that I believe there's some person orchestrating, you know, black boys to fail. I feel like unconscious bias, systemic racism, and the fact, as you point out, that the teachers are overwhelmingly white is what creates this problem. And how are they overwhelmingly white? They are overwhelmingly white because systematically those who make the decisions at the highest level of education perpetuate the racial discrimination. You're absolutely right. There is no individual pushing buttons. It is a system and it is a well-oiled system that has operated ever since the school desegregated in 1954. This is being done on purpose by way of deliberate design to marginalize and render useless an entire generation of black males. So, uh, and and fortunately we're amazing, so that hasn't happened. Um, we have lots of functional, amazing black men in this country, in this city, and everywhere i go Absolutely. all around the world so clearly Absolutely. that doesn't so clearly uh, as my angelo said still i rise but uh your point is taken so you know you're saying well you gotta know your way around it and i would also argue that i, f- I feel like some of parents have been i don't know if brainwashed is the right word um indoctrinated maybe to believe well you don't receive an orientation the problem is when your son shows up at kindergarten you do not receive an orientation 
to public education. No one tells you your special ed rights. No one tells you that before your child is suspended that they have a federal right to hear the charges against them, to be informed of the evidence against them, and they also have an opportunity to tell their story. Nobody tells us that. Well, and the, well, the other thing is I, I feel like sometimes as parents we are... Uh, sort of indoctrinated to believe that medication is the easy way out that way we don't have to blame ourselves we don't have to do the work we don't have to you know we can just give them a pill and agree to a program um, and then absolve ourselves of responsibility and that is being pushed by america's public and charter school system the drug companies which fund the American Federation of Teachers and the National Education Association. They fund the American Psychological Association and the American Psychiatric Association. And they are increasingly putting more money into teacher conferences to leverage influence to get teachers to tell parents that their children need medication in order to get an education. And I need your parents who are listening to this show to understand federal law prohibits a school from denying a child admission because the parent chooses to medicate or not. It is your decision whether you want to medicate your child. The school cannot force you to do it, and that is the law. Okay, well, there's a lot of things there that we can unpack, um, which, you know, we probably don't have time to do. Uh, we do have some folks that want to talk to you on the phone. Sure. But, I, sure. you know, what? Do we, so you're going to say take your workshop, but other than that, what do we do about it? And I mean, I think, you know, an IP, is that necessarily a bad thing? Is it necessarily is a bad thing to have your child psychologically evaluated if you do it independently? I mean, I, I personally feel like we have many gifted and talented uh, black boys in particular in our schools who are going undiagnosed as such and being labeled as problem Absolutely. children because they're too smart for what they're being taught yeah. and the way they're being educated and as such they become problems because they're bored as heck and so Absolutely. so if we had an evaluation then we could find out that their IQs are high and they actually qualify for an IP on the other end of the spectrum not necessarily anymore it depends on the state that you live in uh, the feds took mentally gifted out of the special ed code which means that states are no longer required to provide it nor do they get subsidy for it well in California you do I mean in California exactly. you do but the thing about it is still it's still inadequate in most cases well, in Pennsylvania, you get it, too, but in places like Michigan, you don't. The point is we're seeing a drop in the amount of black children who are evaluated and classified as mentally gifted because the states are no longer being paid to find them, and it is a crisis issue. Yeah, there was a study that came out last week that found that um, African-American children, boys and girls, are uh, far less likely to be referred to gifted and talented programs. Absolutely. Um, and then they have to pass a culturally biased IQ test even when they are referred. Right, but many of our children will pass that and will, you know, knock it out the park many if of them given won't. a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Correct, but many of them also won't who should have because of the discriminatory, discriminatory nature of the test, which I give on a regular basis as a school psychologist. You give IQ tests, do you, but you absolutely, and yours aren't culturally biased. All all IQ tests are culturally right. biased. There's no such. It's thing a standardized test. That is, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So how do you absolutely. how do you administer that? Well, you have to administer it the way that the test is designed. We're not allowed to deviate from it. The point is we need some culturally sensitive assessments that are put on the market that we can use that are far less likely to discriminate against black children. Testing in and of itself is intended to be racist because it replaces the Jim Crow sign as a strategy to limit the opportunity right, they're, they're, they're gatekeepers uh, so I assume and I want to get to the phones but I assume Absolutely. Dr. Umar Johnson that you are for getting rid of the SAT uh, as many colleges are now doing and these other standardized tests that uh, that are and used you know for college admissions and, and, and you know why they're getting rid of them they've done those tests have done such a good job of limiting opportunities for African Americans they're no longer needed it's just like the legalization of marijuana crack cocaine and other crimes have done such a good job of mass incarcerating black males that they no longer need to pathologize marijuana usage. Hmm. Well, I think it's a uh, profit motive, but okay. Um, let's go to uh, Mikael from L.A. because he called first. Good morning, Mikael. You're on with Dr. Umar Johnson. Shalom, shalom. How y'all doing today? Uh, uh, the Good best morning. thing for us is uh, separation. I understand that many times, and recently the Nation of Islam had out a petition 
uh, we have in our own country where we can have our own hospitals, our own gas stations, our own Airlines, right. I mean, that's not a new idea. You know, my father know talked not, about that in the 60s do? of, of African-American nation in the Black Belt South. It's one of the things I don't agree with my dad. May he rest in peace about. But it's certainly been thrown around since probably Marcus Garvey, probably even before that. Um, your take on that, Dr. Umar Johnson? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I am a Garvey. I, I am a Pan-Africanist. We disagree with the Nation of Islam's philosophy. Uh, we're not interested in some states in America because you're still going to be surrounded and beholden to white power. We're interested in independent lands outside of America where we can nation build. So well, we have Liberia. Issue. I mean, technically, right? Well, well, but Liberia is controlled by America. It's an American colony. I was just there a few years ago. It's controlled by America. But here's the issue. How can you talk about an independent country when black people don't even spend their money as a nation? $2 billion a year on Air Jordan, $4 billion a year on liquor, $20 billion a year on beauty aids. In order for us to grow to nation building, we first have to operate like an independent community. Um, real quick, we'll go to uh, Stephen from North Hollywood. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. Uh, Need the short good version, morning. please. Hi. Good morning, Dominique. I just got two words with Dr. Johnson. Uh, you have us on speakerphone because it sounds terrible, Stephen. Not you, but your phone. Okay. I, uh, I, I'm, inside, I'm inside my car. I just want to say thank you, brother. And, and what has integration really done for us? Thank you. Okay. Short and sweet. Go ahead, Dr. Umar. Well, what integration did is it allowed white, the white power structure to benefit off black economics the purpose of desegregation because remember it was desegregation and public accommodation it was just a white business that could access the black dollar that all it was it was the decentralization of black economic power that's what integration was so you're also you also believe we should uh separate again and get We're some land in Africa and get our own nation i mean honestly i i that's something a lot of people do believe i don't Oh, we we, we built this White House. But, Our but, ancestors' well, blood, clarify, sweat, though. and tears to, built this nation. We are a let, superpower yeah. because of black labor, and I want my 40 acres and a mule. I want to clarify repatriation because it gets oversimplified and misrepresented by people who don't understand Pan-Africanism. We believe that there needs to be a strong central government for African people on the continent. We do not believe that all Africans in the diaspora should go back home. You have a right to live wherever you want to live, but we must contribute to the building of a government that is strong enough to protect us wherever we are. Well, there are 54 Article nations in Africa, so an African yeah, government... And, and it doesn't matter which one you go to. A continental to, government? We need, to build, oh. we need to build relationships with all of them. It doesn't matter if there's 100 countries in Africa. We need to build relationships with all of them. Black people are disrespected because we don't have countries that look out for our best interests. Why aren't Chinese murdered by police? Why aren't European Jews murdered by police? Because they have countries, departments of state that will look out for their Yeah, people, that's part of it. And then the, the white supremacy we part. We don't have it. Yeah. Exactly. 540 in the morning. Exactly. We'll return to our conversation with Dr. Umar Johnson, taking your phone calls all the way till 6 o'clock when Steve Harvey takes the microphone. 520-KJLH, 520-5554. Radio Free, 102.3. KJLA talking with uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. Most of you know him um, as a psychologist. Uh, he is a lecturer and he's in town. He'll be uh, giving a training in Long Beach on Saturday and a lecture at the Blessed Love Gift Shop uh, in L.A. on Sunday. Dr. Umar Johnson, speaking of sports, uh, you put forth a uh, theory that uh, set off quite a bit of controversy by stating that Kobe Bryant... Uh, was the victim of a conspiracy. I wouldn't call it conspiracy. Um, and it's just an allegation, obviously, because I don't have proof of it. But based on what I saw and based on what I've seen in previous murders of high-profile celebrities, I do believe foul play was involved um, in Kobe Bryant's death. Whether you look at the fact there was no sound box uh, within the helicopter that normally records conversation that takes place that was not there and even right now the feds are saying that they're absolutely not certain as to what led to the crash there's just a lot of uh, questions that have not been answered but why go right to pharmaceuticals i mean there was fog and even great well, pilots make mistakes well i have several friends who are pilots 
and none of them have bought into the fog argument. They've stated over and over again that pilots have been flying through fog for decades, and fog is really not a good excuse to justify a helicopter falling out of the air. Got it. Well, you know, it does ground planes all the time, but let's go to Cynthia from Torrance. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning. Good morning to the KJLH family. To you, Dominic DePrima, and you also, Mr. Johnson. I want to speak to two things. Uh, first, this is Dominique DePrima's show, and you did over-talk her. Uh, part of our problem is the disrespect that we keep showing to each other. We're here to listen to both of you, but we cannot hear you when there's disrespect. The second thing is that Obama did do a lot for black African-American people. He did create the Affordable Care Act, as everybody wants to call it, the Obama uh, medical insurance. He did that for everyone, but it affected black people in a measure that we needed. It allowed families to continue to take care of their children longer. They up the age of which they could stay on their medical. He also extended education rights so that there are grants that are extended out to our children so that we can educate ourselves. Also, for women, he did more for women, and that is why more women are rising right now uh, in government. And so we need our black men to stand up, but we also need them to be respectful. And so um, I get you're here to speak this weekend, but for us to hear you, you still need to remain respectful. We as a people need to unify more, yes, and it would be nice to have what we need uh, within ourselves. Okay, and let's allow him to respond, that, Cynthia. Wealth in our community. I appreciate the love. Um, you also reminded me, black, black First Lady, Black Attorney General, expansion of the Civil Rights Division in the Justice Department, a blue ribbon panel to look at uh, law enforcement issues, just being a black president. There's a lot of things. But um, let's. Uh, is there anything you want to specifically respond to Dr. Umar Johnson that Cynthia said? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'll take two things that you just mentioned. He talked about the blue ribbon panel to look at police genocide, but he did nothing about police genocide. You mentioned that he expanded the civil rights division, but he did nothing to protect black people's civil rights. Actually, the there were lots, there to, were lots of prosecutions. There no. were, there were police departments under consent degree. All that went away when Trump Barack came in, but there Obama was enforcement going absolutely on. Absolutely nothing. Okay. About we'll, we'll agree genocide. to disagree. Your but second the point. The one point that I wanted to say was she mentioned, uh, education. Barack Obama cut money to historically black colleges and universities. And I have friends who are presidents of HBCUs, and one of their contentions with President Obama was his reduction of funding to HBCUs. Okay, so since we're talking about schools, a lot of people are always asking, where is the school that you have been collecting money to build for, for years now? People are wondering, when is that actually going to happen? And is Dr. Umar Johnson just ripping people off? Well, obviously, you must not follow my work because we purchased two schools February the 7th of 2019. It's been over a year now, and we're in the process of renovating those schools. We have the Honorable Frederick Douglass Building, and we have the Honorable Marcus Garvey Building in Wilmington, Delaware. They're both in Wilmington, Delaware? Absolutely. Hmm. Okay, that is interesting. I actually do follow your work, and I haven't read anything about that. So I'll, I will uh, be excited to learn more about it. Um, let's go to uh, D.A. from L.A. Uh, good morning, everybody. Short and, uh, version, please, because it's 56. Uh, good morning. And I uh, just wanted to give a shout out to uh, the professor. I, I do follow him. And I actually I don't agree with nobody 100%, but I do agree with him 99.9%. <laughs> okay, it's okay. 56. I need your question, D.A. Yeah, it's just a statement that welcome him to L.A. and for everybody to come out okay, and see thanks. him on, on Sunday. All right. Yeah. So say again, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, where you'll be. Uh, yes, indeed. I will be in Long Beach for the Know Your School Rights Black Parent Training Tour Boot Camp. And it's open to anyone. You don't have to be a parent. And that's from 9 to 9 at 516 West Esther Street in Long Beach on Saturday. And the very next day, we will be at the Blessed Love Gift Shop, 1404 
Burning Avenue, 4 p.m. on Sunday, the next day, March the 8th, and that's 4 p.m. They can get tickets for the training at drumarjohnson.com, my website. They can also register at the door, and they can contact the Blessed Love Gift Shop to get tickets for that event, but they can also get tickets at the door as well. And phone number, if they need to reach me, 215-989-9858, Okay, uh, let's go to Nicole from Compton. Nicole, thank you so much for your patience. You're on with Dr. Umar yeah, Johnson. Yeah, I've been on about 30 minutes. But yeah, it's I typical for this show. Say, okay, go ahead. Quick, Don't spend your time um, complaining. <laughs> real quick, uh, thank you for coming on the show. The information is very helpful. I'm a, a mother of a son. All our black kids are brilliant, but we do need tools to help us to navigate through the system. I believe the information is, is good. And lastly, I'm disagreeing with the lady caller who said he disrespected you. He didn't. Okay, do you he have a question, Nicole? Facts. He, just, he was just stating As facts. he sees and them, his opinions more than no, facts. No, no, but no, yeah. no. But well, sometimes I'm in the, I do this too myself. When we are passionate about something that we believe in, sometimes we interject and we kind of cut off. We don't hear the full thought. Okay, thanks, us, Nicole. Saying, and I think Got it. All right. That's your opinion. Love it. Dr. Umar Johnson, you have a response to Nicole from Compton? I hope Nicole finds her way to Long Beach on Saturday. And we want it to be clear that this training in Long Beach is not just for Long Beach. It's for the entire state of California. So that's from Oakland down to San Diego. If you need this information, you need to be in Long Beach. This is a one-time tour. All right. And again, as...